I'll just write down, if you want to take a look at my site, and I know I have to keep my head this way, right? It's a, uh, here's the, whoops, here's the URL. Village Green NJ dot com. Oops. And that's the site. And if you want to send me an email, if there's something you want to ask me after this, I'm Mary at villagegreennj.com. Um, so uh, basically on February 27th, I sat around having wine with three other former expatchers. And we talked about the need for this site, how people kept approaching us, saying we miss the level of local coverage, and uh, how can we fulfill this? So two of us, it turned out, it worked for us to go and do this on a full-time basis. Um, two others had jobs, part-time, full-time. They weren't quite there yet. Uh, but Carolyn Maynard Parisi, who was Maplewood editor after I left, and then quickly also became the South Orange editor and was covering both towns for a year. She and I, we knew the towns. We had the contacts. We had the networks. She lives in South Orange. I live in Maplewood. So we decided to do it. Uh, so February 27th, we made that decision. And June 12th, we went into soft launch. We kind of got launched accidentally by a person who was excited that we wrote a story about them. We, we were, as of June 1st, really just kind of covering the news to load the site with content. And then we got launched a little bit earlier than we wanted to. We wanted to do July 1st. But it turned out to be a good thing because the end of the school year had a lot of news. We started getting great numbers. It proved to our potential advertisers the potential of the site. Um, anyway, so Carolyn and I sat down. And what we first decided on was what we were going to call ourselves. We went through a lot of different names. Is it South Orange Maplewood Insider, Maplewood South Orange Insider, Soma, Mapso? all these nicknames for the town. We decided to stay away from a geographic specific name and went with the Village Green. We wanted to be able to do Milburn to a certain extent. We had the numbers on what Patch was billing for those towns from <laughs> the fact that I used to be a regional editor and used to receive that information. So I knew what the markets could bear. I knew what had been billed through Patch alone, and I knew that that, if we could capture that for those three towns, we would be in very good shape. And that there was more out there as well, because you know Patch never really fully committed to that hyper-local model uh, the way it should have. Um, so Carolyn and I, because there's two of us, realized that we needed some kind of legal structure in case we had a big fight, or somebody had to move to Amsterdam, or you know. <laughs> Somebody got divorced and needed to go get a, a, a full-time job. I'm, not that I'm talking from anybody's personal experience. But uh, the first person we sat down with was an attorney um, who did it for us as a, cons a free consultation because we had been uh, in the community covering news. And he thought what we were doing was going to be of great value. We found this happened a couple of times. This happened with an accountant. This happened with a bookkeeper. A number of people were willing to sit down with us for free for a first session. And we didn't even ask for that. It was very nice. Uh, we sat down with an attorney who became our counsel. And I know Joe can tell you how to do Zoom legal to, to set yourself up. Something we decided was we could set up our own Blargo. We can set up our own customer relationship management. We can set up our own legal. We can do our business registration. But if you do all that on your own, you might get bogged down and a little overwhelmed. If you can get someone to help you and delegate that those chores, that's a great idea. So Ian Grodman, our attorney, uh, he went and did our New Jersey business registration, our federal tax ID, our state tax ID, and one other thing. Oh, and he set us up as an LLC. And we decided, you know, a lot of this conversation Joe just had with you, we looked at nonprofit versus for profit. We quickly decided on for profit. We wanted to get up and running. We think journalism needs to be proven as something that is profitable. Debbie's done it with BaristaNet. Um, so we went with an LLC, and we had Ian set that all up for us. The other thing that we needed to do was a partnership agreement in case of any kind of conflict, and we needed to split the business um, or some t somewhere down the road one of us left. Or we wanted to sell it. What happens if we want to sell it someday? We create something really valuable. and. Uh, 
and we want to sell it and move on to something else. So we actually just signed that. That took a long time. Um, for Ian to set up all of our LLC, our business registration, our tax ID numbers, that was a $200 fee. Um, for the partnership agreement, those were fees we took on ourselves as individuals because we had separate attorneys representing us, and that was $600 apiece, um, which feels like a nice chunk of change. But um, we felt we needed to do that to have a good partnership agreement so we could avoid those conflicts going forward. If you're on your own, you won't have to deal with that. But um, we're also glad not to be on our own. Um, we think that we can make enough money. And we, I, I shouldn't even say we think that. Part of this process that was three and a half months between making a decision and going into soft launch um, was creating an 18-page business plan. I went online, and I found a SCORE business plan template. I looked at a number of them. You know SCORE, it's the, what is that society? It's, it's retired. Entrepreneurs, right. I found an, a nice template from them. Uh, I created a four-year profit and loss spreadsheet. Um, all the exercises that the business plan put me through was smart stuff. Um, my husband, he's a consultant uh, in business management for Fortune 500 companies. You know, He insisted on this, that I do some of this. He, I mean, he believed that we can be profitable and that we should do it. But he said, you know, you really need to sit down and create targets about what your revenue is, what your revenue streams are, what you're going to be making month over month, year over year. And from that, we started backing out, well, what do we need to make a month? Well, how much is that going to come from ads? Is that, uh, you know, is, uh, do we have other revenue streams? Um, we decided to try to diversify our revenue streams. Ads is our major revenue starting. We also have Tiny Pass, and we're doing something a little different with it. Um, because there are some other folks in our market covering the news, we felt we couldn't come in with a paywall initially. We're doing a subscription newsletter. When I was at Patch, a lot of people thought Patch was that daily newsletter they signed up for and that landed in their box, and they loved it. We thought that's something really valuable. We set it up on MailChimp to automatically use the R RSS and, um, and deliver uh, and a newsletter that we don't have to set up every day. It'll just automatically get set and go. It actually, and it's been doing this for over a month now. Uh, and then when you go to click on the, we have a little button on our, our homepage if anybody's on there, and it says, you know, do you want to support local community news and get a great, you know, news filled newsletter daily? Subscribe. Um, it takes you to the paywall, you pay, then it takes you to sign up your email address to get the, the, the newsletter. We haven't promoted that at all yet, and we do have like 15 people who signed up. So it's 500 bucks plus that's, that we have that we really didn't have to go out and sell any ads for. We hope to promote this at some point and use it as a bit of a revenue stream. Um, I don't know how successful it's going to be or not, but we thought we'd give it a shot. We also want to do classifieds down the road, talking about those plugins on WordPress and um, business directory, something we want, want to monetize. But we're starting off with the tiny pass for the subscription newsletter and with the advertising sales. Um, and I'm kind of going off my topic. I mean, I just you just wanted me to talk about how we set up legally. But but. You know, there's one point I really want to reinforce here, and that is the importance of the partnership agreement. That's different than just the formality of setting up your legal thing. And because we've got a few people in the room who are in kind of partnership setups, um, how many are there? The, well, Pam's got one. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people. Um, and if you want to hear the downside of not having one, <laughs> Debbie can talk to you offline. Uh, and that's probably why Mary and her partner spent the time to do it right, is to, because you have to think about all the eventualities. And, and you can't do that on a, uh, a self-serve basis. I mean, you can do it, but it really, I think, I got to think it's a, a lot better to be facilitated to have somebody sort of asking all the what if questions. What if this happens? What if that happens? Mm -hmm. um, not just, you know, do you go to Amsterdam, but um, you know, how do you make sure, how are you going to take care of ensuring that you're both putting in the equal effort? If you have equal stake in it, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. What if one of you has to dial back effort by a quarter or some measure? How do you even negotiate that? Mm -hmm. So not even knowing what you guys went through 
that's probably some of the things you had to think through, and that's why it takes some time, and that's why it would be difficult to do it on your own. It's interesting. You can do it, but I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, the division of duties is an addendum to the actual legal agreement, and we've started off, we actually haven't added that quite yet. We have a draft, um, and we're testing it as we soft launch to see how we actually function. We have just divided up some of our duties, like who covers planning board and township committee. I, I, I live in Maplewood, but I'm responsible for South Orange government, and she lives in South Orange, and she's responsible for Maplewood government. We decided to do that to give ourselves a little bit of distance, because I remember being in Maplewood and having my street rezoned for the school district, and I had to find, I was the only editor then, and they had stopped freelance, you know, so I had to, how do I cover this? And we will do that for each other, but we also had to decide who is going to be the liaison with the ad sales rep, and who is going to be the liaison with the, our developer and the tech issues. Um, and we're kind of seeing if it sorts out the way we sure. thought it would, and we're adjusting it. And you may not have to try to figure out everything up front to that kind of detail, but what you may have to figure out is how do we figure out, you know, what's our process as things come up a year from now that we haven't anticipated. Mm -hmm. And so one thing may be that you have a scheduled, um, you know, once or twice a year thing where you have an agenda, here are the topics we're going to cover on these dates into the future. Because mm -hmm. there are things that are going to, that will come up that you can't anticipate. But anyway, it's, a, that's, it's good to know that you've done that, and, and I've, I know I've talked with people individually about the importance of <coughs> sorting that out. You can't anticipate everything, but you do need to get beyond just the legal framework and think about what does that agreement look I like. I know there's that thing. When, when Patch did the massive layoffs in January, and we ran a meeting very quickly and to help people get set up right away, and people were saying, I'm going to jump right in before the audience disappears. Mm -hmm. I think there's merit to that, but also you should feel calm that you can take the time you need to take to get yourself set up before you jump in as well. There are a number of things you need to, to sort out, like the legal issues and the tax issues um, and you know the platform that you want to be on, a customer relationship management system we have so that we know where our ad salesperson is and who's talked to whom and what the relationship is and contact information. There's a lot of things I didn't even think of at the beginning of this process. So I didn't want to interrupt, but I just want to make sure I reinforce that. Is there, is there Does anyone have a question? I'd almost love to see if you could have a minute or two to do a flow chart of what you did. Of all That's the a, you took. It's kind of a good idea. But I was trying to think. It's not necessarily step after step. You're right. doing a lot of things simultaneously. Like the business plan went on over time. I mean, and you could almost do it like just with post-it notes on your wall. Yeah. You know, instead of in a complicated way, take a picture of it with, a, with an iPhone and say, okay, these are all the steps that we took to get it to get us up and running. Because it's, you did a lot of different things and it's, it, it was very, I'm, I'm very impressed. We were inventing it. When I did it 10 years yeah. ago, there weren't, I mean, my father was an entrepreneurial journalist, um, so he had done it a generation earlier, but there weren't tons of people like there are now mm -hmm. doing it. And so, you know, we were figuring it out as we went along. And I thought, like, for example, my initial partner was a, uh, was, a was my tech guy. It was actually the guy who came and fixed my computers. Um, and, uh, you know, I, and he couldn't even code. Um, I, you know, I, it was just inventing it. Mm -hmm. So now you have the advantage of a lot of people who, who have paved the way. I have to say, yeah. Uh, of accumulated knowledge and organizations. Lion, which will tell you more about the local independent online news, and certainly us here in New Jersey, which really set up in the Dodge Foundation as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we Mary's really kind of doing everything right. I'm really impressed. We stole everything from Barista, basically. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, Kenny and John... Kenny Catscout and John Crepizzi are down the hall doing Broad Street ads and had created that Blargo WordPress theme. And I looked around at Locable and a couple other things and decided to go with Blargo. We decided to be on Broad Street ads. We had a relationship with them. Kenny's brother, Tim, who just graduated from high school as our developer. <laughs> He's been great. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you that. I want you to use him. Well, and uh, and uh, um, yeah, but we, we looked at BaristaNet and said, this is a really nice, clean site, and obviously it works. They just had their 10th anniversary. Let's make our site look a lot like their site, but you know, unique and individual with our own logo. There's differences. Oh, look, 
you know, you don't even have to ask people for their ad rates. They're on their sites. Barista Nets is on their site. Um, I don't know if, but Bill, if yours are on your site. A lot of a lot of sites just start looking around, and you can pull people's ad rates off. We took Barista Nets ad rates, and we adjusted them a little bit, and then we took them to uh, someone else who sold ads, and I don't I want to name who she's with, and she looked at them and said, "Oh, they're a little high." We lowered them. We took them to um, Annette Batson at BaristaNet, who has been extremely helpful, really nice. We're on Broad Street ads together. We're on the same ad network, so we should be able to sell ads and be kind of colleagues in that ad network. She totally believes in that. She said, oh, they're still a little too high. They came down a little bit more. Um, and then we took them to the woman who runs our business improvement districts in Maplewood, who's been very excited about us and you know, put an ad up right away so our site would look like it had ads. She provided us with some ads. And she said, you have hit the sweet spot. I think you're good. Um, so we, and then we checked in to see how much that added up to for a month at those rates, and if we could make our numbers. And it was giving us, if we sold it at full rate, like $11,700 a month if we sold out everything. When we can start there, I think we need to get to 20,000 a month to make the target numbers we have in our P&L over time. But we had to get, you get down to that nitty gritty at some point. And, um, and as we're selling them, we are giving people breaks, but we have called them our introductory rates. They will go up over time. They sound similar to your rates, Bill. The funny thing is, I, I had another blogger in town say, well, how can you sell ads? You know, what are your numbers? You just launched. Our numbers are actually not bad for just launching. I mean, we had like 5,000 unique visitors in June, and they're only measured from June 18th. Wow. 12 days. So, so this is all good, like 5,000 right? plus. Sorry, I'll stop well, talking. No, 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 I just want to make sure we, we stick on the business and formation. And you had a question. Because uh, Joe needs to come up and talk about using. CRM that you're using. CR, what are we using? Capsule. Capsule. And it's capsulecrm.com. Um, and our ad sales person just started on Thursday, and she's going to come later for the ad sales session. Um, but it all depends on if she feels like that works for her. You know, we'll see how it goes. It seems pretty intuitive. You know, it's it just you just kind of put in the person's name, their contact information, and be like, well, I know this person because our kids went to camp together, and she came up to me and said, I want to buy an ad. You know, Mary has the relationship with this person. Carolyn has a relationship with this person. This is her oh, dentist. Please. Yes, I, and everything we do is in a cloud, and I, our QuickBooks are in the cloud. Everybody said, do your QuickBooks in the cloud. Um, it's kind of nice. You don't so have to worry about your computer crashing. So you're going to be around for the sales piece, yeah. too. So we'll come back to that. I'm just trying to, sorry to be a No, you're right. You've got to keep moving. <laughs> schedule, but that's what we're going to do.